presenting some fresh material um, now that we have the publication of ASCE 722. Our company, um, Structural Integrity Associates, is really well known in the nuclear power and fossil power industries um, going back to 1983. And um, in 2014, our, uh, a group of us um, started a, a product certification focused branch called True Compliance. Um, we've been able to achieve IAS uh, accreditation from uh, as a product certification agency, meaning we comply with ISO 17065. So, so to get us started off, um, I just uh, think that this um, topic is important, um, but I always want to share some motivation. Uh, Non-structural uh, seismic topics are not emphasized in structural engineering education, um, and they often fall through the cracks because they involve complex, often complex equipment, um, complex architectural components that uh, don't really um, fit within a single discipline, and they kind of have to span from architect to structural engineer or mechanical and electrical engineer to structural engineer. And um, it's often uh, an afterthought, but um, the damage that has um, resulted from failures of these types of, of components and systems is significant. I know, uh, personally speaking, um, when I was living in the Bay Area and I responded to the South Napa earthquake, uh, some of the biggest um, things that were disruptive to the businesses and, and um, residents of, of affected buildings were um, non-structural requirements. I think the biggest single uh, loss of property value was when the fire sprinkler pipe broke open at the Adagio Hotel in downtown Napa um, and, and destroyed a bunch of, um, a bunch of uh, expensive finishes. There are also a very high uh, percentage of the value of, uh, of, of a building. Um, the structure um, may only be um, like 18% of the value of an office um, or 8% uh, of the value of a hospital. Um, but the contents and the non-structural uh, components um, are generally the largest uh, line items um, for a building construction. So we, we know generally the performance objectives, um, this category four, depending on the, site, the level of earthquake, there are uh, different um, performance objectives, but operational is the goal objective for risk category four buildings under design earthquake um, and um, immediate occupancy on, on um, I, I believe, on max credible earthquake. Uh, other uh, more everyday buildings um, that are like risk category two will have more of a life safety goal. Um, so the um, seismic non-structural requirements will, will vary uh, and those are generally represented with a, with an importance factor for the components that we'll discuss later. So the, the, the thing that I really like to um, emphasize is that in 1971, um, these two black and white pictures that you see, uh, the, the San Fernando earthquake caused um, some structural collapses of two different hospitals. Um, the top picture is from the Olive View Hospital in um, Silmar, California and the Silmar Veterans Cal, uh, Hospital below both, um, I, I believe, caused uh, loss of life and um, really resulted in uh, action from the California legislature to make sure this didn't happen again. Um, the laws they passed uh, were implemented by the um, Oshpot jurisdiction and uh, really strict seismic structural requirements um, came into, into effect over the coming decades. However, in 1994, the Northridge earthquake showed that we hadn't looked at everything that we should have, which was uh, resulting in um, the, an earthquake in the same area and um, 11 hospitals in that region um, were knocked offline. So they were knocked offline due to a variety of reasons, um, some without power, some without um, uh, cooling or heating, um, some some without with with uh, debris blocking areas and uh, it just was um, generally these hospitals had to take the patients that were being treated there and transport them to other locations and um, 
and those who were seeking treatment because of injuries sustained during the earthquake had to find uh, treatment um, at, in further away hospitals. This is not a goal so the California uh, that, that they wanted to meet. So the California legislature uh, passed another law and that has led to um, stricter implementation of non-structural requirements. Some of that uh, leadership from the hospital community in California has trickled down. And um, I know for uh, my committee involvement, uh, a lot of those um, former professionals and former professionals are uh, serving on the committees and, and helping write the ACE7 Chapter 13 non-structural seismic standards to this day. 